1993 multiple choice. We'll start with 1819. We'll see if we can get through 2021 and then 22. Um, number 18, if f of x equals sine x over 2, then there exists number c in the interval pi over 2 to pi, 3 pi over 2 that satisfies the conclusion of the mean value term. Which could it be? I'm going to work down here. I know that f prime of c equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a. That is the mean value term. The instantaneous rate of change is equal to the average rate of change. The tangent line is equal to the secant line, as long as it's a continuous function. And we know that sine is a continuous function. So with that said, I'm actually just going to fill in those portions. So the derivative of a sine over here is cosine x over 2 times the derivative of x over 2 is just 1 half equals. Over here, I'm going to plug in sine of... 3 pi over 2 over 2 minus sine pi over 2 over 2 all over 3 pi over 2 minus pi over 2. I'm going to work down the board a little bit. So 1 half cosine x over 2 equals sine of 3 pi over 4 minus sine pi over 4. Now this is a time all over. This is a time where really knowing your triangles can help a lot because I can see a rate that the numerator is 0. Because we know that, the re, that there is a reference angle here of pi over 4, 45. And there's another one over here. All right? Well, I can see the sign of those two blue triangles is, is going to be equal. All right? So this sine minus sine in this case will be 0. So 1 half cosine x over 2 equals 0. So you get cosine x over 2 equals 0. So unit circle time, when is cosine 0 in that interval? And again, I always think of the unit circle here, x and y. Well, obviously 0 is right there for x value. So at pi over 2, it is 0. So I go all the way back to the top. And that pi over 2, though, is equal to x over 2, right? So I multiply both sides by 2, and I get x equals pi, all right? So the mean value theorem is going to have a value at letter D, pi. All right, so 19. Let f be a function defined by f of x equals x cubed for x is less than or equal to 0, or x equals for x greater than 0. What's a fine statement term on x? Now you don't need a graph, but I'm going to take one second for the sake of learning here and make the graph. Now it's continuous. There's x cubed. <coughs> there's x. But I also know that the derivative is, we'll have to see if the derivative is the same. f is an odd function. And that is not true. If you mirror this, it does not mirror from the first to the third. Obviously, if I mirror this function, I would get that. That is not the same. All right? So it's not A. F is discontinuous at zero. No, it's continuous. All right? F has a relative max. I don't see any relative max. It goes on forever. F prime of zero equals zero. Okay? So you could do the derivative. <coughs> And I see that f prime of x equals 3x squared and 1. So this is not differentiable at 0. So no, they're not the same. f prime of x is greater than 0 for all x. Is this function increasing all the time? When you look at it, yeah, it's increasing. So the answer is e. You could also tell that from the derivative because you had 3x squared. Any value of x squared is going to be positive. Problem 20. Let R be a region in the first quadrant enclosed by y equals x plus 1 to the 1 third, a root function. The line x equals 7 and the x-axis and the y-axis. The bottom of the cell generated about the y-axis. And I'm looking at the answers first. Cylindrical shell, cylindrical shell, about the y. Can't be those because you cannot go across the x. 
So I got two that are cylindrical shells and one that's a BY. So I'm going to take the chance that's a cylindrical shell method first. That's my first decision here before I just run them up. And I do a quick and really cheesy little graph. All right, y equals x plus 1 to the third. And we're going the other way, too. x equals 7. The y x axis. So I have this little region right here. I'm going to about that about the y. Well, again, this is an easier one for this. So, again, 2 pi x f of x dx is from a to b. There is cylindrical shells. So I'm looking for 0 to 7, 2 pi x, and then the function is q is there. It's not 0 to 2, so I'll take that one out. And if I really just look, I can tell right now that the letter B is the answer. All right? Because it goes 0 to 7, that's A and B, 2 pi x, and the x distance to, a, to one of the cylindrical shells is there. It's just x. And our f of x is just the function. So the answer to this one is letter B. You need a really good understanding of cylindrical shells and volumes of the other methods to make that work. But you know right away I was able to cancel out some things. And when you can cancel stuff out, the AP test gets a lot easier, a lot quicker. Problem 21. At what value of x does the graph y equal 1 over x squared minus 1 over x cubed have a point of inflection? We have to do some derivatives here. So I'm looking for an inflection point. So I'm going to start that y equals this. I want to work with everything in the numerators. So y prime is negative 2x negative 3 plus 3x negative 4. And y prime prime is 6x negative 4 minus 12x negative 5. And I'm going to do a little factor in here because that's going to make our life easy. And I would go back to this. And I want to make sure I'm probably going to take a second here and make sure I have it screwed up. Check my math here. It looks like I'm good. Well, that I get 6 minus 12 over x. Well, obviously 0 makes it undefined, all right? But I also can see that there is a value here of x equals 2 that makes this portion 0. So I can tell by visual inspection that 2 is a possible point. So I see 2 and I see 0 on my graph, all right? 0 is not in the domain, all right? So I don't even have to screw with it. So here's the thing. There has to be a sign change. And I can tell immediately that this is never going to result in a sign change. So I know that the answer here, and I'm not going to overthink it at this point, is 2. I can see that there's going to be a sign change. Because if I plug in 1 into this part of it right here, I'm going to get negative. If I plug in 3, I'm going to get positive. They change a the sign. Thus, there is a point of inflection. 22. 22 is math. Um, this is an older test. I'm not sure in my group, my students, that I would work with this much at all. They want the antiderivative of 1 over that thing, so you want to do an integration. So in the multiple choice, my first instinct is to look at this and say, take the derivative, you know, of the answers. Well, the first one I know is going to go down to negative 3, and that's not going to work. I know this is going to be 1, b is going to be 1 over x squared minus 2x plus 2, but then it's going to be times 2x minus 2. So that's not that one. I also know that there's no way that 1 over x minus 2x plus 1 times the derivative of x minus 2x plus 4 would ever become that. So my students would be a little stuck here. They would be, they would be looking at this going, uh oh, I don't know arc sine and arc tan. I'll finish it for the rest of the group. But if you don't know at this point, you could guess. The answer is going to be E. And the only way to get there is to see that this is the integral, all right? of 1 over, I need to complete the square here. That's what I see. And I want to do this. And when I do this, I'm going to get this square. And one of the big deals when we talk about antiderivatives is that this is just one of the techniques to know that this is tan negative 1 of x minus 1 on me. So, if you're going to do this, then the only one that's going to be, and again, tan negative 1 is our tan. Again, complicated problem, but if you can get down there, you can take a guess.